Hey, everybody. But on the phone with uh, my wife and talking to uh, Gina up at the Tulsa Humane Society. And since we lost uh, Henry and Rat Dog in the course of about two and a half weeks, we've been sort of going through, uh, what do we do next? And so Gina calls and she sends us a video of these uh, little dogs that she has in her house. And she's like, they'd be perfect. And then, of course, you know, I mean, Tootsie just died on freaking Sunday. So she, Natalie and I are both really raw at <laughs> this moment. We just got the candle urn back for Tootsie's ashes. And so you know, I've got her and Henry both on the freaking uh, shelf. You know, these, uh, And then there's a little votive candles on the top, and that's kind of how we've but anyway, it's weird, the stuff that you do. I'm not going to depress you. I'm not going to talk. We're going to game here in just a second. Um, you know, there's a part of you that's like, it's, uh, you know, I don't even want to talk about this. And then there's another part of you that craves a filling of the empty space in your house with the love that you had, even if it's not the same dogs. I mean, it's still the same kind of experience, you know, it's, that unconditional love and the interaction, it gives us something to do. I, I still look around here and I still see them everywhere. I see them everywhere. Um, I look down at the little place where Henry used to sleep. I, I walk down to the kitchen. I'm checking. I'm looking sort of this little uh, conduit that I always look into the bedroom where the dog cage was. And I'm like, oh, oh no, no, they're not in there. Creature of habit. It just does not go away, you know, immediately. So then you're having the conversation. Well, am I in the right frame of mind to make any kind of decision. I don't think so. No. But if we know we're going to rescue anyway, some people say, well, the best thing you can do is to just immediately get another animal. And, uh, and like, no, I'm not sure that's the case for us. It may be for somebody else. So anyway, we've been going through that and I've been on the phone with her. And I'm waiting on um, an important call from my accountant, you know, as we get ready for taxes. So in just a few, while we're playing the game, I may have to duck out for a few minutes uh, while we, um, uh, let me hang on. Let me make sure I got this right here. I may have to duck out for a few minutes and take care of a few things. The taxes are always, it's always a fun time of year. <sighs> Somebody posted a meme online and said, if you're excited about tax season, you're in the wrong bracket. <laughs> That's actually a pretty clever way to look at it. All right, the evil within. All right, yeah, I think everything's good. Um, uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I'm just sort of fragment. I've been editing. I'm working on this. Uh, oh, hang on, I'll come back to this. I'm working on a uh, the edit of a conversation that... I don't know. I, I, I feel compelled to have this conversation about this purity cult. And there are many factions that have them. Political movements have them. Religious movements have them. Social movements have them. Where there is a constant escalation. There's a constant vilification. There's a binary sort of a good evil narrative going on. There's a total lack of listening, the dehumanization of our ideological enemies. I'm so tired. of. I'm just so weird. Do you ever feel that when you log on to social media and, um, we'll have a conversation about anything. How we had a conversation a few days ago about, masculinity. I thought it was a fair and reasonable and nuanced conversation with Dr. Hector Garcia. You should have seen the comment sections. It's like either they're they're missing they're eagerly missing the point or they just came to create a villain so they could play the hero against it. And it's so maddening. I mean, I know the comment sections are especially on YouTube, but I mean Social media has been such an amazing thing. It connects me to people like you. It connects me to so many opportunities and experiences. But at the same time, it's it's allowed us to just become this, I don't know, you know, there's so many just keyboard mashing malcontents who have no desire 
to see the human being on the other end of the, of the line and who immediately knee-jerk themselves into just some of the worst behavior, some of the worst language. And by language, I mean accusations, insults, ad hominems, just attacks, verbal attacks. I'm so tired of it. It's just... And we see this in the right, for sure, and we also see some on the left. Now, if I stop and talk as a liberal about the problem on the left, these very same people will lose their minds. They just lose their minds. They say I'm making a false equivalence. I'm not making any kind of equivalent argument at all. None. I'm not saying there's an equivalence going on. If you see somebody say, always say, so if you see they have a city on fire, we have a neighborhood on fire. It doesn't mean our neighborhood is not in flames. And we should probably address it, don't you think? There's no room for that anymore. Nobody wants to talk about that. The what a battery in full play, and everybody is just screaming at each other at the top of their lungs. If you disagree with me, you're a Nazi. So I've been uh, putting together a show that I think, I think is going to air the first Tuesday in March. And when it goes out, will it become a helpful and respectful and professionally produced part of a conversation about how we can stop thinking in these clumsily binary terms and dehumanizing so many often worthy and meritorious or how about flawed, but still uh, not discardable human beings out there. Will it be a part of that? Or are the same people who have lost their shit since whenever going to circle that podcast with torches and lose their minds and and do what they do. They thrive. Their oxygen is drama. Their oxygen is conflict. They will throw gasoline on every spark. Those people, will they be there? Yeah. Am I preparing myself in my heart? Yeah. But I feel compelled to talk about it because, you know, given the platform that we have, given, given the fact that I feel like I should lead by example, lead being a relative term, you know what I mean, like if I have the broadcast and I have the opportunity to address it and I feel like I've got sort of a, a reputational equity of being kind. I'm trying to be kind to believers and non-believers. I try to be kind when it comes. Sure, we have some fun. We poke at the sensitive nerves of religion and sometimes we'll have fun with the apologist and the truly awful people out there. But, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'd rather build a bridge than burn it. And so I think, well, I can pass the buck to somebody else or we could talk about the, We could talk about it. We talk about it on our show. We could be real. We try to be real about it. And if somebody disagrees, we could have the hope that they might disagree without screaming bigot uh, or I mean, whatever the pejorative happens to be at the time. Um, I, I feel like I can have a conversation, host a conversation about that and keep it respectful and keep it introspective and keep it from becoming just a freaking circus. You know, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm a humble guy, but I mean, I'm confident in my ability to, to tell stories and to conduct interviews and broadcast a show or else I wouldn't be doing it. I don't know. I've been working on it this morning and I, I feel this growing knot in my gut. Oh God, it's going to go out there. And what's going to happen is I think the, a, a large percentage of people will take the journey and they will get it. But the people who have all the time in the world on their hands are going to just lose their minds. They're going to eagerly, gleefully misunderstand and they're going to just lose their shit. And it just, it just tears your heart down. I'm probably not in the best place anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been four days and I'm just, I'm trying not to be melodramatic about it. But it hurt. I mean, it stings. Like, today I just got pissed off. I was had to run to the post office. And uh, I was thinking about Henry, how he died on the table after three and a half hours in surgery. I've talked to several veterinarians. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to dwell on it, but I'm like, we called mid-procedure. Yeah, this is too aggressive. This is too long for a dog to be under. You, you know, this is wrong. And they were like, oh, it'll be fine. Oh, it's all right. He, you know, he's doing fine. Three and a half. So this was like the two hour mark. 
I've talked to other veterinarians and they're like, no way should that dog have been under even close to three and a half hours. And of course, when his heart stopped, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I should have gotten a second opinion. What if I'd talked to these veterinarians first? What if I had done some due diligence and done the, the, the groundwork ahead of time? What if I didn't? I mean, I'm guilty of trusting. I, I just trusted. And to a degree, we have to trust, you know, those people. And he's, you know, great. He's been so good to the animals in all these other years. I mean, for years and years. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, I'm, we're in your hands. I think Natalie actually said that. Like, we are at your mercy. And uh, I told another, he's like a 40-year veterinarian in this town who happens to cross my circle. And he said, he never keeps a dog under more than an hour, just for safety reasons. I'm like, uh, and you know, he didn't want to throw another veterinarian under the bus, but he, you could tell he was like, holy shit, three and a half hours is too long. Uh, that should have never happened. Like, this is what I keep hearing. That should have never happened. And I think, you know, I mean, I couldn't do anything about Tootsie's stroke and losing her on Sunday. I mean, that was just a, you know, that was what it was. Heart disease and stroke and all those things just happened. But Henry, I feel like if I had just been more skeptical, I would still have him. And I just got mad. I was, I was in the car, and it's just, it just like a wave of. And uh, I told Natalie, it's like I, I don't know that I, I hold to the stages of grief. I don't think that. It necessarily is a linear process, and I think grief is different for everybody else. I wasn't, I mean, I was hurt, I was wounded, I was upset, but I, it was just like today, 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 three weeks later, that I felt this just sledgehammer of pissed off. I cannot believe this happened. He should be alive. He should be in my arms. This is total bullshit. How did three and a half hours on the table even happen? And then you realize that there's nothing you can do about it except learn from the experience and know better the next time. And you better be damn sure that if any other procedure happens, then I'm going to get second opinions and third opinions. And I'm sure as hell not going to let an animal be on the table any longer than two hours, if at all possible. You know, hell, let's do a partial. I would rather risk a partial procedure, I think, and bring him back out from the anesthetic. Three and a half hours. No wonder his heart stopped. And I should have known. I should have known that. And I have just been carrying that. And everybody's so gracious. And they're like, don't blame yourself. I mean, I, and I appreciate that. And I understand what you mean. But it's just a natural inclination of mine, it, of anybody, I think, to second guess. You go, what if? What if I'd have done this? Why didn't I do that? And it's, uh, it's just very unfair. You know, it's very unfair. And then, I guess it's becoming a little bit of a monologue. I'll, I'll play the game here in a minute. Natalie and I are thinking, are we trying to replace the other dogs? So, you know, if, if we go over to wherever these little dogs are that Gina was talking about, are we cheating in some ways the dog or ourselves by thinking, I need you to be Henry or I need you to be Tootsie? And I'm like, we have got to be conscious of the fact that, that you know, we, first of all, probably aren't ready. And two, that we need to think of this as another chapter. This is a new adventure, you know, and this will be amazing. I'm sure it'll be good and, and wonderful. And it's a journey. I hope if you're okay with it, I'd like to share with everybody here. I'd like to share the new additions to our family whenever they happen. If it's, you know, next week or six months from next week. Um, but I worry that, you know, are we, are we going to say, I wish you were. I wish this dog acted like, instead of loving the dog for for what it is, I don't think that'll happen. But these are some of the conversations that we have been having. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for letting me. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, I got all my work done. So we're back to a game called The Evil Within. For those who are joining us now, um, I like horror games. I think just because they're immersive and. Often they're tense and they draw you in. Um, 
they don't need to be gory. I just like uh, I just like a good, intense, dark piece of fiction. Uh, we are a cop. We've been sucked into some netherworld. I, honestly, I don't understand the plot. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm just going room by room, killing zombies and picking up random clues and sticking them in my enormous pockets. You'd be amazed at all the stuff I'm able to carry at any one time. So now, since I've been playing Resident Evil uh, 2, I guess I need uh, to rediscover the controls <laughs> for this game. And we will have an adventure together. Sure is nice to be able to come and talk to my family online about all the shit that's going on. I feel a little guilty, you know, burdening everybody, but um, hell, even if there was, uh, I, I, I just feels good to be able to. Sometimes it helps to articulate. To uh, I used to say, uh, uh, I used to keep a journal, and I used to write a lot of letters, and I found that. Uh, Taking a moment to sort of, uh, God damn it! How come I can't pick this thing up? Um, taking a moment to organize your thoughts is helpful, and that can be done on paper, can be done via email, can be done verbally. But you know, it's something about hearing the you know, resonant sounds of your own ideas sometimes does help you sort of uh, quantify them. And, uh, Okay, this, I believe, is new territory. I don't know where we are. Except that uh, we have a very Inception-like changing of the environment as we proceed. Um, let's see where I'm at weapons-wise. Let's load up our gun. saw a discussion going on online about uh, the guy who plays Aquaman. How do you say it? Jason, is it Momoa? Whether or not he is as hot as everybody says it, because I, there was a, oh wait, something's happening. And I guess there's a cookie, a Girl Scout cookie called Momoa's. And so they had his face on the box and all the women were like, oh my God, he's amazing. And uh, there was a big debate about uh, whether or not he really is all that sexy. And I think, from what I can see in the comment sections, uh, he's a big hit. He is, uh, you know, he's a big hit. Am I supposed to be running from something? Running to something? I hear uh, very sinister sounds behind me. Jesus, what's that? Where do I run? Um, that's just greed if I could kill there because I was picking up supplies. Shotgun. Anybody see a door? Weed. Super mag? Hang on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hang on. Hold on. Uh, inventory? Okay. That's my magnum. Let's load. Jesus. I like this gun. So do I have to dispatch these uh, these baddies? Is that what I gotta do? Oh! Let's go in there. Fake. Honestly, there is no wrong answer. Attraction is subjective. 
someone can look at someone and another person can look at the same person and it's... What was that line from High Fidelity? How can you be wrong for you gotta be expressing kidding. a preference? And that's kind of true. This place is filthy. here, and people like to argue, and I'm the same. The Dave Matthews Band is the most overrated band in the history of bands, which I believe. But it's is a preference. His doing. So everybody else jumps in. They're like the Dave Matthews Band is the greatest band in the history of band. And there, they have a right to that perspective that because it's. Are you all right? You do realize there would be no one to replace me. Oh, I got a, uh, I got to take this call. Hang on.
Okay, sorry about that. Did you enjoy my little scroll there? I just thought, well, if I got to put you on hold, I might as well have some fun in there. So I actually put it together like weeks ago and um, only recently uh, was reminded to link it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's save it. <clears throat> Why are my movements so wrong here? Right? All I want to do is save it. Okay, space to save. I'll save it here uh, in that slot. It's like Girl Scout cookies. We're talking about preferences. You know, Girl Scout cookies. I'm a kind of a thin mint guy. But, you know, you might like them. Uh, they call Samoas. What are the ones with peanut butter in them? Uh, I think I need more juice. So we'll come back. I run by her so I can impress her. Yeah, yeah, I'm athletic. Yeah, you know, that's right. Um. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, oh, goodness, that's a long fall. So let's uh, carefully navigate around the hole in the whatever this place is. How do you feel? I mean, do you feel like is there a growing cultural weariness with all the online squabbling? Or do you think it's just going to get worse? You know, do you think that people are ever going to lower the volume? Come back down to a moment of reason. How does a zombie know how to do that? Hmm? How does a zombie know how to do that? Okay, so he's coming down, and there's a whole bunch of baddies. You know I gotta deal with them eventually. So let's wait for this guy. Can I shoot a grenade? Do I have any grenades? Oh, can I throw a grenade up there inside the... the cage filled with bad news? Oh, shit. And I don't have my magnum. This is a problem. Grenade. No, I don't think I want a grenade. Okay. Stupid son of a oh, ammo. I will. I have nothing. That should have gotten them both. Okay, grenade. Liquefied weed. Let's go over here and see what's in the boxes. been a bad boy. Why am I... Is it because I have uh, been playing another game? Why am I not unable to do the basic functions? Hmm? Shotgun ammo. Magic juice. More shotgun ammo. And yet, my magnum is empty. Re 
grenade. Come on, baby. Uh, hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Mr. Man. Allow me to get my grenade. Oh, tell me that hit him. That is such bullshit. Somebody said that uh, the walkers in The Walking Dead can talk now. Shit. That's just the biggest bunch of crap. You do not want a piece of this. Very angry. You've had a tough week. Very difficult week. It's gotta be a way to knock out these dudes. Oh, hey, how's it going? Did he just get back up? Dynamite? Game is just bullshit. Hang on. Allow me. What was that? Let's uh, shoot up real quick. Oh, yeah. Who's dropping freaking dynamite on me? I'm looking. Do you see anything? Hmm? That's a bad sound. that door again, pal. Play with fire, you're gonna get burned. Sure use something besides freaking shotgun ammunition. Oh, look! There's something besides freaking shotgun ammunition. Magnum? No. So let's change weapons. Go back to the lame ass regular revolver. And then we'll climb up here and get ourselves likely pulverized by some member of the undead wielding a weapon that they should not be able to wield. Back to Jason Momoa. Momoa? I don't do celebrity crushes, really. But I've got a couple. There are a couple. Kate Beckinsdale. I will admit to having a moment of pause when I see her face. Just lovely. Kate Blanchett. I have a thing for Kate. Kate Blanchett. Galadriel. In fact, if they ever made a movie about my life, I would want her to play me. Just because she can do anything. She's Kate Blanchett. She can do anything. I think she played Bob Dylan once. She can do anything. I don't know. That's the only... I mean, I, I don't sit around upset thinking about it a lot, but... I mean, if I 
was to admit to a celebrity crush. What's in the drum? I'm sorry, I am a clumsy game player and it must be tedious for you. Just bear with me. I have no ammo for the big gun. So, shotgun in hand, we will Press forward. <laughs> Rachel Wise. Here's another one. Just beauty and brains. Wow. I guess I have thought about it. But, you know, you, you know that these are just... Like, uh, we're tennis fans. My wife loves her some Roger Federer. Okay. That's unnecessary. Oh. It's very aggressive. He's very aggressive. And I'm out of ammo. Can I burn you? Burn. sort of dissipate like Baltimore at the end of the last film. <sighs> kind of digging the danger music in the background. What's that motorcycle sounding sound? What is that? What is it? What am I missing? Oh, there's somebody out there who wishes me harm. No sniper rifle bullets left. I do, however, have... A gun that would... Perhaps stop a large rodent. Where is he? Ah, I see you. It's gonna hurt you worse than it hurts me. Relatively speaking. Danger music. I'm missing something. What am I missing? Yesterday, the day before. I'm so out of it that I didn't realize I was playing the game with the uh, 
game screen turned off, so as I was navigating through all of the puzzles and problems... Oh, look at all this stuff! This, this is not good, actually. This means something very, very bad is about to happen to me. Shotgun, load up. What else is down here? Do I have any more life? I'll take that. Mmm, epinephrine right in the heart. Now I'm a little wacky for a few minutes as the effect takes in. And now, I have sniper bullets. Oh, shit! I am the worst shot. <laughs> I'm the worst shot. All right, try this. Oh! <laughs> Drop and roll. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Get me out of here, Jesus! Should have prayed for Jesus' protection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm burning alive. Oh, I went to the depths of Hades until I was a crisp. How do you like your hero? Do you like him original or extra crispy? Okay, let's do this again like a gamer might do it instead of like somebody who is flailing and a swarm of bees might do it. Can we try that? You deserve a better gameplay experience than what you just saw. All right, let's start with the grenade. See if we can dispatch those guys down at the end. Yes, come to me. Come to me, and I will dispense mighty vengeance upon you. <laughs> oh! Out of ammo. Reload. I don't have ammo. I need to pick up the ammo. <laughs> I, I forgot to pick up the ammo. That's important when going into a firefight. Now I got knife wounds. Pardon me while I reload, sir. Just hold real still. Now. Just hold real still. Oh, God. That's just bloody. That's just bloody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this time... I'm going to resupply before I go into the uh, tiny portable cage of doom. Okay? All right, here we go. Are you with me? Are you my moral support people? All right, let's start with the sniper rifle. Reload. Reload. Come out of here, and I will teach you the way. I will show you the way. The way of the new world. Satisfying. Oh, 
You got nothing. You got nothing. Do I have any medicine left at all? Oh. Give me a hit right in the heart, baby. Roll. Roll. Just standing in the middle of the fire. Granted, I would have a, a grid already sort of branded onto my skin from the heat of the metal, but I'm not complaining. Just reload. 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 And let me check my Magnum. Still nothing for the Magnum. Okay. How was that for you? Was that exciting? I mean, was that like a... Like a Jason Statham movie. Because I, you know, I, I want to give you your money's worth. I want you to feel like the investment you're making in me <laughs> and this game are worth it. I just want to say thank you. Am I supposed to drop? Hmm. That looks important. gonna go see these uh, dogs tonight. Natalie's sick. Probably go tomorrow. But we're making a pact, and I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. We're trying to make a pact with each other that we are not gonna walk in and go, oh my god, I can't hang in because they're so cute. We're gonna try to maintain a level of objectivity, and if nothing else, we walk away. We give ourselves you know, 48 hours. You know, walk away, let the emotions sort of die off a little bit and uh, make sure that you're not making a decision in the heat of the moment. And uh, then, you know, after two days, if you are still thinking, yeah, it feels right, then you do it. Seems like the responsible course. being without an animal in the house. I mean, Cat doesn't really count. He's just an asshole. He lo I mean, we love each other. He's, he's our cat. But he's... Un Maybe it's a Persian thing. He needs us, but he doesn't want us to know he needs us. And so, you know, we'll pet him just for a few 15 seconds, and he'll just decide he's done. And then he turns into Satan. Wails in the middle of the night, walks around, he'll come in and purr. When he does the kneading thing, he's purring so loud. So loud. Oh, it's love. He loves, he loves us. He loves us so much. And then you pet him, and all of a sudden... <sniffs> I mean, what's that about? Why? You wanted to be paid attention to seconds ago. Now you are the devil. And the love of a cat is amazing, but it's not like the love of a dog. It's not that unconditional tail wagging, wide brown eyed, mouth open, oh, I love you so much. And everything we do is my favorite thing. There was something back here. Let me check this door. Um, because that's what you know, dogs are like. You're like everything we do is my favorite thing, and that's just amazing. What's that? Journal of Sebastian Castellanos. Almost six months since the accident, Myra and I drift further apart with every passing week. I have to stay strong, but it's so easy to drown my thoughts in whiskey. I figure as long as it doesn't affect my work, what I do on my own time is private. I finally got Myra to open up to me about the accident. Now I'm more worried than ever. I don't know what's worse, the fact that Myra is becoming paranoid and maybe losing her mind, or the fact that she is, or, or the fact that what she is proposing, that the fire wasn't an accident, could be real. 
I owe it to her to trust her instincts, but if they're correct, God help whoever did this. Should I save? I guess I should save. This has actually been more fun back here again than the first part of Resident Evil 2. I must and be I, losing. I don't it. know if it's because I was just in a pissy mood during Resident Evil 2 and was not in the mood to do puzzles. <laughs> you know, because I I, I don't I'm, Whatever is the matter. I'm not a puzzle guy. I don't want to do puzzles. I want to take an adventure, you know. I want to be the hero. <laughs> Okay. Let me see if I missed anything important in the chat room. Is that what I think it is? Shit. One bullet? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <sighs> One bullet. coffee percolator there you see that anybody remember the old Folgers commercials I'm dating myself we're talking about the old toys we used to love as kids mine was the evil Knievel stunt cycle uh, we did uh, light bright uh, we had what else did we have it was so good uh, Natalie was talking about the uh Betty Crocker Easy Bake Bake Oven, which was just a light bulb. And you'd make these tiny little brownie cakes. And they, you know what? They weren't bad. They were actually pretty good. So, uh, I mean, I thought they were good. Think I can help her out from here? Without any sniper ammo? Better get over there. Oh! Uh, I don't think I wanted to fall in the water. What the? Oh my god! How fair is that? I didn't even know he was coming. He comes at me from behind. It's just cheap. Cheap. DeMargo, I don't know if the game... The game itself is likely worth watching. Me playing the game... It's sketchy. That's... That's a whole other question. Okay, so the idea is... Blow him up? Or do I wait till he goes on the other side? Yeah, I don't think I can kill him. I think I have to try to get around him. So 
how is that done? They say here in Oklahoma, and I have no idea if this is true, it's just a fun story to tell, but they say there are catfish that are the size of small cars. I don't know if that's true or not. But they say under Keystone Dam, there are like, I think they said uh, the catfish is the size of a Volkswagen bug. I, that just sounds bogus to me. But, uh, I mean, I know catfish can get massive, can get really big. But seeing this big creature sort of swimming around, it makes me wonder. Maybe this is just a catfish that went horribly wrong. Apparently, the move is I have to wait till it gets over there in the corner, and then I just bolt for it. So this may be a little trial and error. Let's wait. It's kind of a mini Kraken. Now, does he come back on my left here, or does he uh, go around the other side? I just want to sit here and think about it for a minute. Can I do that? Can I just sit here and think about it? I have to time it perfectly. Go, go, go! Stairs, stairs. <laughs> yeah, you know that's right. to do something here? Kidman, hold on! Help! There's too many of them! Help how? If I throw a grenade, she's dead. Let's try a sniper shot. All night. Okay, apparently I'm gonna have to get down there, shoot the body so it goes in the water, and then go through that little gate. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. How 
the hell am I supposed to get up? This is very bad. Yeah, go eat him. Go eat that guy. Now, is this gate going up yet? Ah. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh. a close shave. Very close shave. Fortunately, my cat-like reflexes allowed me to escape. Ninja-like, I would. I'm, I'm like the wind, really. Very deep pockets because I'm able to carry all kinds of supplies. Watch this. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, that's a nice place for a bear trap. Will their love remain unrequited? Unrealized? Or will they give in to the passion that burns between them? I feel a sense, I feel sexual tension. I'm just saying. All right, somebody's got a machine gun. I have no more grenades. Shit. Am I 
weapon stock is just poo. Oh! You got nothing. Burn. Sniper? Yes. All right, baby, you and me in the elevator. I get a feeling this is not gonna work and we're gonna be stuck with the stairs. <coughs> Excuse me. No, please. Okay, ideas? Anybody in the uh, chat room? I think I'm going to keep the uh, sniper rifle out for close quarters encounters. Like, how do we know each other? We just co-workers? I'm so glad you're all right. Ever since the church, I... You were at the church? Yeah, Joseph and I. He's in bad shape, or at least he was when I last saw him. What about the boy from the hospital? Leslie? I found him in a cage. He freaked and ran, though. See, we're making forward progress. This is really preferable to sitting around doing a bunch of puzzles all day. Go in this other room, find a code, come back, find another code, dial this in. What is that? What was that? Waiting for a cutscene. <sighs> Pardon me. I kind of hate to walk in the goo because you just never know what's shallow, what's deep. And when the crack and we'll come back out. I think we've all been seeing strange things. Reminds me a little bit of the creature in the movie The Host. Have you seen The Host? No. Why? Joseph was. It's like he was turning into one of those things. Maybe it doesn't affect everybody. What was that? Kind of like to know what I'm picking up. Yeah, heavy firepower. Two bullets, which will just be enough to irritate the uh, the undead horde. What? I'll do it. <coughs> I've got something stuck in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. There's some of Ken Ham's followers right there.
she seems strangely un unperturbed by this. Stay back. I smash boxes because there is often inventory items inside the boxes. Ammo, health, fuel, reading materials. I'm just... What is this? Did you shoot me? You started turning into a monster. You attacked me. I'm sorry, but you're tainted now. You might try to stop me through you. Wait, what are you talking about? What is she talking about? Get it open. Get it open. Get it open. Leslie? Leslie, is that you? <laughs> Leslie. That's good. <laughs> Just a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is it? Uh, Rubik? Uh, this... Help, 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 help! Uh, hey! This... My hands have got cold, so I have these, uh, Natalie got me these Leslie? hand warmers that you plug into your USB port. And they seem gimmicky, like the kind of shit you'd get at, um, Elephant, what's the elephant, what, what's that mall gift shop that always had the shit in it? They're awesome. They're awesome. My hands are always cold, always. And the rest of me is fine, I'm good. Hands freezing. I don't know what causes that. I'm getting tired of playing games. Um, are those mannequin parts? <laughs> Danger flammable. Which means what? If I set off, a, if I fire a gun in here, then I'm... <laughs> Thunder sheets is scary. What is that? Oh shit. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was, that was a classic. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of, uh, you ever watch MacGruber on Saturday Night Live <laughs> where at the end of every skit, they just blow the hell out of themselves. That's exactly what that like. Oh, that's the first good laugh I've had in a while. That's funny. All right, can I lure him back here? Can I, can I get back out? Okay, so if I can lure him back here and then throw a grenade in there or shoot a gun in there, can I... It blows the whole building up, doesn't it? <laughs> that's the best laugh I've had in a while. I say the secret to humor is surprise. I don't know what to do. I 
thought I saw something that had to be picked up around here, but I guess not. Space pick up. Has anybody gone to go see uh, the movie Glass? I really enjoyed Unbreakable, and I really enjoyed Split. But the reviews on Glass were kind of mixed, so I just couldn't get excited about going out there, seeing the theater. Have you seen it? And is it worth it? Would you bother? Hang on. I have to, to update chat, I have to jump out of there. Okay, well, if I can't set off a weapon... He'll never see me here. I guess I need to... Maybe, maybe I can get by him. Listen for the sound. It's obviously audible cues. His vision is impaired. So... I wait for him to... go down to my right. And I just... sneak on by. And he'll never know I was here. By the way, that's a flaw in the narration. The flaw in the uh, plot. I walk in there with a lit lantern and did not explode. Come on, baby. Does all the uh, gas just miraculously disappear? Is that what happens? <laughs> that's a, I think that's a physics flaw there. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Factory key card. Oh my god. Oh, is that the wrong weapon? I just come in here, I'll pick them off one at a time.
Watch this. Oh, shit! I just grenaded him. And there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what the Bible says. Weeping. Wait, is it weeping or wailing and gnashing of teeth? Does anybody remember? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. missing huh what am I missing <clears throat> can I get through there somehow can I get over can't open it anybody have any ideas <clears throat> Covered quite a bit of ground today. It's a good feeling of accomplishment. Instead of sitting around doing a bunch of damn puzzles, we moved. Who's that? Joseph. Oh, thank you. Mmm. Mmm. So many supplies. So that I might better accomplish my, my mission.
serial killer investigator missing identity and fate. Why is fate? Oh, I see. Of investigator unknown case goes cold in countryside serial killer investigation. Police deny lead investigator missing. Okay, do I have enough uh, green material assembled to uh, perhaps warrant an upgrade of some kind? Let's see. Okay, our life gauge. Maximum sprint time. Mainly damage syringe recovery weapons fire rate reload time clip capacity accuracy handgun ammo like that scene in Big Trouble in Little China when they're all in the elevator and they're about to go um, in to defeat Lo Pan. Kurt Russell says, I feel kind of invincible. Yeah. This place gets more degraded every time we walk through it. How's everybody doing for time? Would you like to uh, to stop? You want to keep kicking? I'm probably done working for the day. I'm gonna take care of Natalie. She's got a sore throat. You know that sniffly stuff that's going around. I feel really bad for her. Oh God. It won't let me go down here. So that's actually maybe a good thing, huh? I've got to figure that the... Uh... The Kraken, or the nephew of Kraken, is down there somewhere. Like their grenades. Those are satisfying to use. you worse than it hurts me.
This feels like a setup. Your foot a little car, Sydney. That's my guy, it's Joseph. Well played, my friends. Well played. All right, you make the call. Um, looks like Nat's going to be another hour. So we can continue here, or we can play a game of Drawful on Facebook. You tell me. Evil within or drawful. Yeah, it feels like I'm near the end, Timothy. It feels like I'm coming up on uh, the climax of the game. Well, three more chapters is not near the end. That's, that's quite a bit of gameplay. So, Rosemary, I know you're always going to say drawful. I know it. My hands are still freezing. Why is that? Like I'm the guy that, you know, uh, there's a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon where they go out and they're in the snow and then they get freezing and then they go warm up some by the fireplace. Then they run right back outside. That's kind of like what I'm like. I'm going to go out and get cold. Like I'm the, I'm the 24 or the 12 months a year shorts guy. That's kind of me. Um, it's funny, Natalie and I was wearing some shorts and, um, I think we were going to head out and hit a drive through but it was freaking cold out. But I mean, it's, it's what I happen to be wearing at the house. And she's like, she's like, are you going to wear that? And I'm like, oh, we're just going to stay in the car. Why? Because I'm wearing shorts. And she goes, they're white and it's after Labor Day. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are these rules? Oh, I'm sorry, Timothy. Uh, Twitch said uh, Resident Evil because I forgot to switch it back. It's my fault. I go back and forth. I go back and forth. Yeah. I don't know. Or we can just call it. I'll run downstairs and figure out what we're going to make for dinner tonight. I've started to enjoy cooking so much more over the past couple of years. Um... Yeah, I've got Resident Evil 2. I started it uh, yesterday or the day before. I like it. I don't love it yet. Um, but we'll uh, we'll see. We'll see. Give it a chance. I mean, it's very, very well made. Uh, graphically, it's one of the most immersive things I've ever seen. It's just amazing. Um, okay. Sorry, Rosemary. Just press forward. I'm a pretty good cook. I used to be. Right. Uh, oh, hang on. How did you get here? It wasn't easy. At least I haven't had any more uh, episodes. I wish I could say the same. Hey, I think I might have found us some transportation. This thing gonna run? Only one way to find out. Shit! What are you doing? Answer me. Uh. Oh! 
Oh my god! What? Makes no sense. Out of ammo. What is that? It's still coming. I need ammo and supplies. I'm just sort of gallivanting. I'm not even running. All right, sniper. Reload. God. This is not the time to be just... I don't just... know how long we'll be safe here. The hell was that thing? What's the name of the spider from Lord of the Rings? Now what? Sebastian, they're above us! Watch out! They've got dynamite! I'm looking. Oh, shit. Enemy to the right. place to leave a box. I didn't really get to cover, did I? Was lying out there in the middle of everywhere. me while I medicate and reload. Excuse me? Leave what to me? Oh my 
god. That was a close so, one. Very exciting. Whoa! This vehicle still moves? <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Keep us to the left up here. Oh my god. space repeatedly. Very, very, very bad little man. Very bad. Very unruly creature. Get this thing moving! What? Uh, uh. Nasty. Congratulations and respect to the civil engineers that built that bridge. <laughs> Where are we heading, Joseph? <laughs> I've got a theory. We seem to be moved around an awful lot, almost as if by someone's will. So it's nearly impossible to get any sense of the geography around here. But the light, Beacon Mental Hospital, it's always in the distance. This thing you found me hooked up to, I've seen it in more than one place. Yeah, so have I. It seems like it's the same exact one, but it's hard to be sure. The thing that I've noticed is that each time I run across one, I seem to be closer to the lighthouse. It could be a coincidence, but like I said, it seems as if there is some intelligence behind it. So you figure we ought to cut to the chase and just head straight for the hospital? Exactly. Nice work, detective. The right side looked like it led more directly toward the hospital. Just get us out of here. There's an ambulance there. There might be some kind of first aid. I'll go. No, I'll do it. Don't let any of them on board. Hmm. Okay, what do I have? Got a pistol. And... Not much else. Is that a sawed off? Jesus. All right. So much stuff to pick up. Oh, look. I see all the barrels, so I guess that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just blew yourself up. God.
This is such bullshit. Let's try a different strategy here. What are, what are my weapons? Stick with a pistol, I guess. See if we can pick up a few supplies along the way. There's got to be something along the periphery. Or not. So let's be a little more stealthy and see if we can sneak through. Oh, she ran right through the fire.
Hold your breath during a game. Do it all the time. All the time. I want to burn the body. I'm trying to burn the body. All right, there's a sniper weapon or a sniper. Do I have any more juice here? Oh, oh thank goodness. All right, where was that guy at? big eye in the middle of my screen or up the top center tells me that they can he can see me whoever he, now watch this yeah that's satisfying serious lower body work at the gym to be able to walk like this for an extended distance, I'm just saying. I get it. Hemostatic, an emergency blood clotting agent for treating wounds. The bandage contains medication for easy to use first aid. Well, okay. Screw the other guy. I want that for me. There's something else in here I'm supposed to do. I guess I give him the hemostatic. What the hell is that? With a 50 cal? Shit. Okay, so where is he?
see it? Where is he? Alright, this is where it goes down right here, baby. Maybe not. Okay, I guess that answers that question. How many hits can I take with a 50 caliber? Say how much ammo I have. Oh my god, they have dynamite? Exit C. Supposed to be bringing her medicine or what?
who's this? Very exciting. Whew. All right, that's it for uh, the moment. I'm gonna go and grab a bite to eat, or get ready to grab a bite to eat, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try it again. That was a great. That was a great sequence. That was a lot of fun. So anyway. Uh, we will play Drawful, maybe tomorrow night, maybe this weekend. I promise you, Rosemary, we shall. In the meantime, I hope uh, hope the rest of your day is fantastic, and I'll see you soon.